Russia for a daily brief of Microsoft headlines, and we've got a full plate, so we're gonna we're gonna skip the banter and go right into the cool stuff. <laughs> um, MSN has launched an interactive guide to the Battle of Britain. Now, being an ex Englishman, you know. We always take pride in, in the great Battle of Britain, how we kicked everybody to the curb. Um, but this is kind of cool. It's it's an interactive thing. You, you can you see the three major planes of the game. you got a time map, and you can search the uh, photos and document archive. As you can, you'll be able to see from the, the overlay here, we, we've got a, a, a the, uh, of the site in action. Um, I think it's cool, you know. Yeah, it is. It's um, you know you get the opportunity to go in and in, into the hangars um, and look at you know an aircraft like a Spitfire and lots of different angles. You get to see different maps of London all overlaid with the old maps versus you know how London is today. And you know zoom in and out of the photo archive, which is like this wonderfully huge photo mosaic. Yeah. You can you know zoom right in and see hundreds upon hundreds of different photos. This was all put together by a company for Microsoft called Shoot Hill in honor of the Battle of Britain, which is um, 70 years now. Wow. And, you know, most of these things don't generally kind of get reported in the news, but it's just one of those cool little things that uh, Microsoft gets involved with. And in this case, the reason they're getting involved with it is to show off, you know, yeah. some of the things you can do with Silverlight. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good. It's um, Microsoft's version of the <laughs> the, the Google logo. Yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. Another thing that's cool and going on that Microsoft are involved with is Wi-Fi. Now, everybody's familiar with Wi-Fi, but you may not be familiar with Wi-Fi. For those of you who remember, um, last year or a while back, the FCC opened up a number of uh, spaces in the frequencies that were used by television broadcasters. And they and lots of companies like Microsoft and Google want the FCC to open these up so that we can use them for Wi-Fi because it's much, much easier to transmit over large distances. Now, Microsoft has an experimental Wi-Fi network running on their campus where they're using only two broadcasters. Two? Two, two to cover the entire 500 acres. Only thousands of routers, right, you know, thousands of wireless hotspots to do that. But they are managing to do it with just two now. FCC Chairman Jenikowski was there um, last month and toured the facility, and of course this is all part of the big wind-up to the 23rd when the FCC are going to actually vote on opening these spaces up or not. Hmm. I, I imagine that will have some impact on the, on the vote. Um, now we're, we're, we're sliding into the rumor territory, folks. Um, who was it? It was uh, Tech Review Source has some leaked shots of an Acer Tab laptop with dual touch screens. Now, I don't quite get it, but Paul does. But this thing, the lower the lower half is a touch screen with a keyboard illuminated on it. So you've basically got your keyboard on a touch screen. And like, okay, that seems kind of dumb to me. You know, really? Yeah, I, I don't get where you come along and you say this. <laughs> Only a couple of weeks ago, we were showing a video of a of a keyboard out of Microsoft Labs that was essentially a keyboard with a touch screen. This is exactly yeah, the same well, concept. Here. Windows Phone 7, uh, sorry, Windows 7 laptop with dual screens. The bottom screen is your keyboard and touchpad, but you must remember, it's not just the keyboard and touchpad. Because it's a screen, it can be reconfigured to be pretty much anything. Yeah, okay. I, I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It's cool. It's cool. If this thing makes it out of <laughs> prototype and into development, we should hopefully be seeing it by fall of next year. Yeah. And, you know, follow the link to this. The link through in the show notes. Well, you, you know, let's, let's, let's put it this way. If they combine that previous one that you and I looked at with this and make it, you know, like how that one was configurable by games or whatever, then yeah, okay, I get it. It, it, could, be, it could be interesting. Of course um, There's no reason not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and what's, what's your rumor, Paul? My rumor? 
Um, my rumor is again, we talked about this before, but rumors are again surfacing of Microsoft reviving the Zoom with a HD2, as, or as we called it in the past, a HD7, because it should be based on the Windows Phone 7 operating system. Now, the basic idea here is that just like Apple has its iPod Touch, which is a, you know, a, it's, it's an iPhone without the phone, mm -hmm. considering Microsoft is doing so much with Windows Phone 7 games that if they come out with the iPod Touch version of Windows Phone 7, that would be the Zune HD 2. And you know what? In all senses, it makes great sense for people who don't want the new phone, but they want all the features, and they want to do it all over Wi-Fi, and also for coming into the, into the handheld games market. And when you consider that, the iPod Touch makes up 37, nearly 37, nearly 38 percent of all iOS devices out there. You know, Mike, yeah. Apple's making its money off it. It only makes sense for Microsoft to do it too, and it also opens the door. We know Microsoft tried to do their own hardware with the Kin phone, but if they, you know, if they bring out a Zoom HD two based on Windows Phone seven that they manufacture themselves, well, they don't need a phone component to make them a phone. Well, I, I've already gone on record both uh, in conversations with other people and also on Silicon Angle uh, in a post with that Mark Risen Hopkins wrote that I I am expecting by Q2 of 2011 we'll have the next version of, of Zune HD. Now we've said it before as well that it only yep. makes sense. Yep. So, but there is another rumor. Yes. <laughs> Well, actually, it's kind of a, you know, it's not so much a rumor, but it's going to be, uh, FaceTime is coming to Mac OS X and Windows. Now, we know FaceTime is the open source video communication protocol from Apple. Yeah. It's open source. You know, of course it's going to come. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take the developers to work with, the, the, you know, sure. the, you know, so like, I'm not surprised. I don't think it's it, it, it's just it's going to happen. Period. Sorry, but you know what? I find it very hard to get excited about this. Yeah. I've, I've Skype. Thank you. Yeah. I'm. I'm. It doesn't. It doesn't do a thing for me. Windows Live Messenger does video. Yeah. Chat. Google. Who does it? Yeah. Yahoo yeah, Messenger does it. Yeah. <laughs> so about this? Does it run on your iPhone? No. What I would what I would get excited about is if. FaceTime adopted Skype protocol and you could use it with Skype. Then, yeah, like yeah, that that would definitely make things interesting. But I think the probably the most interesting story this week has to do with Microsoft and Russia, eh, Paul? Yeah. Okay. This isn't very good news for Russia. Basically, what's going on is that Russian law enforcement agencies are cracking down on dissident groups in Russia. No big news there, except for the fact that how they're doing it is by claiming that they're going in after um, pirated copies of Microsoft Windows, which of course puts Microsoft in a very difficult place oh, yeah. because they have to protect their intellectual property. Um, they have every right to go after people for privacy, but when the law enforcement agencies are using it as a smoke screen, um, you know all sort of all sorts of trouble erupts. Now this has been covered. You see a couple of links about this in the show notes because it's been covered twice by the New York Times, yeah. by CNET, and the whole lot. But basically, Microsoft have come out and they have said that look, they don't agree with this. They don't want it being done. They weren't informed of it being done, and their lawyers weren't involved in it yeah. to begin with. Now they have hired an outside legal group to uh, investigate this, but they're also saying that they're taking steps to make sure that this doesn't happen again through various um, things that they already run in order to give out free software licenses, but basically to make sure that these people have free licenses so they cannot be arrested for this. And yeah. This can't be used as an excuse to stem free speech. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably cover this more in, on this coming weekend's podcast, but for now, yeah. For now, we uh, call the show to a close. It's been Daily Brief with uh, Paul and Stephen from Win Extra. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good one. Hey everybody, it's Stephen from WinExtra back at you for a quick moment. Uh, we want to announce that we're going to be running a contest thanks to the good folks at IOLO Technologies. 
Um, they're going to be providing five free licenses for their search and recover software, which will let you rescue those accidentally deleted files, photos, MP3s, and all the other good stuff. Um, we did run a review of the of the program back on August the 28th. Uh, check it out. Uh, the rules are pretty simple. You need to follow WinExtra at Facebook, or friend us, like us, whatever the terminology is these days. And as well, you will need to uh, follow Iolo Tech on Twitter. Those are the simple rules. Uh, the contest will run until this Friday. And at that point, Paul and I will pull the, uh, the eligible names together, randomly pick the top five, and notify you that you are a winner. So don't forget, folks, follow us on Facebook. And follow Iolo Technologies on Twitter. Later.